This is an ounce and a half tungsten weight. And the reason I prefer tungsten over lead is because if you had an ounce and a half lead weight on there, you would have a weight that was this big. Okay, so with tungsten, we're able to get by with a lot smaller profile and with a lot heavier weight, and which again, helps you go through the, the stuff a lot better. Uh, this is a six alt hack attack heavy cover flipping hook made by Strike King, and it was designed to fit right along behind that big weight for punching grass. It's a heavy hook, no flex, but yet it has a really sharp point, so it penetrates easy. But the main deal is when you're putting so much pressure on those fish, pulling them out, you don't want that hook to flex because now you've got a big rod, a no stretch braided line, and a weak hook is what you don't want to have. So the hook at one time was the weakest point of this whole deal, but now it's not. It's actually one of the strongest points. All right, the rig, this is a Strike King rodent. I typically always break the tail. You can leave them together, break them loose. I like them apart so they do have a, a little action. This is actually a real subtle bait that doesn't have a lot of swimming action, but it's just a really great crawfish profile or you know bait fish profile. I go in probably a quarter of an inch. And this hook has a really good keeper to hold that bait up on there. And I pull it down till the keeper pops out because the keeper, the keeper is what's holding it up on there. All right, now, if I was flipping just wood and normal stuff, the bait kind of has a seam in the middle and I would put the, seam, put the hook right in. But since we're punching, I'll actually hook the bait over to the side in the fatter part because I want that hook point buried. Because what happens if you bury it in a thin part when you're punching back and through that mat, it'll come through a lot quicker. Okay, I, we won't have any trouble getting the hook set by even by putting it in that fat part. But it protects my hook because that big weight is pulling that bait fast through that mat. So that's the reason I like to hide the hook over in the fat part when I'm doing this. Now again, if I was pitching lightweight around normal cover, I'd hook it in the center because I want it to punch through real easy. But here I want it to stay in there because I'm going back and forth, back and forth, working that bait through the mat. And when it's rigged up, there it is. You know, that's, a, that's an ounce and a half tungsten weight, uh, a six alt hack attack heavy cover flipping hook, and that's a blue bug rage crawl. And I like black neon, black and blue, you know, you know, here the water's kind of dark, but it's also, you know, it's shaded under there. So I like a dark color, you know, to start with when you're doing that. Now in situations where the water's extremely clear, I'll go to more of a perch color, you know, bluegill. Uh, you know, depends on what you're trying. And sometimes I'll flip a white. You know, it depends on if the fish are eating shad or not. But day in and day out, black and blue is probably the number one color in all 50 states, you know, where you can flip. Wherever you can flip mats at, black and blue is just hard to beat. And I always start with it because it's simple and I like to keep it simple. And the thing about it is this bait is moving so fast when it goes through that mat, if there's one sitting out there, either one of two things are gonna happen. Either he's gonna bite it instantly, or he's gonna leave because he don't wanna be around it. But they don't like to hang out underneath somewhere like that. And they're, you know, they're, they're kinda compacted under there, and then here's this bait dancing around them. So normally four or five hops, pitch it again, go to the next place. Yeah, this is my hack attack, eight foot flipping stick, 65 pound braid, and uh, and that's a big hook. You know, that hook was designed for that, for this application, for getting bit on that stuff and being able to hold that fish and, and pull him from that mat because you'll see a lot of places, you know, I'm gonna have to drag that fish out of there. We're not gonna be able to get to him in the boat. So, you know, you're gonna have to put a lot of pressure on him to get him out. I, I do not recommend fluorocarbon or monofilament for doing this. It's just strictly a, a braid deal. The sensitivity and the power, no stretch, being able to get those fish out because, you know, a big fish on that mat, he's still gonna fight. And then you gotta pin him and then pull him out of the mat. So you need big, you know, big tackle. Works on redfish too. Uh, well, the deal is some of these mats are so thick, even though I got an ounce and a half, if I just pitch that bait out there on top, it just lays there. Like it didn't go through the mat. So, uh, you know, to get it out there through the center, you know, cause if those fish are aggressive or active, they'll have a tendency to be on the outside edge, but when they're inactive, they'll be right in the middle. And I throw it straight up in the air, you know, sometimes 20 or 30 foot and see it didn't go through. Sometimes I'll have to do that two or three times. And it will amaze you that how quick one will get on it if he's under there. Like you'll pitch it up like that and it'll blow through. And when I tighten up the line, a lot of times they got it. They're attracted to that come shooting through the grass. You know, they just rush over there if they're not sitting right, uh, right underneath it. And then, you know, depending on time of the year, this is a big winter time technique too. They, those mats will be warm and those fish will just get right underneath them and suck under them. And, or again, in the summertime, when they're hunting shade, 
I'll hop it up and down four or five times and pull it out and go to the next place. And then what I'm doing, when I pitch it out there, I'm letting it fall slack so it punches. And what you're doing is that weight's busting through that mat, and I've got that weight peg, so it pulls that bait, uh, bait through it. There he is. There he is. You know, basically we come along and this is the first place on this side, the mats are a lot shallow, but you can see it's a point sticking out. Textbook, same kind of place. It seems to be the farthest piece of heavy grass, you know, out from the cover, you know, out from the line. It seems to be where they're, you know, setting up in that current. It's another quality, another quality marsh bass.